All right, so now that we know a little bit about Excel references, let's put them to use. So let's look at this table. This table is going to um, show the cost to run an appliance. Given an hours of use, so a half hour, an hour, two and a half, five, ten, or twenty-four hours. Giving a power, so ten watts, twenty watts, thirty watts, hundred watts, five hundred or a thousand watts. So I want to fill in this table. So we could do the calculation for every single combination, and Excel would be fine with that. Um, but using mixed references would be, and, and relative and absolute references, would be a lot easier. So let me show you how we do this. So I did the first one in Excel. And you can see that you know it's 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 the correct equation, and it pulls from several different things. It pulls from the hours of use and the power, and it also pulls from conversion factors that appear up here. So how do we really um, go about changing this? So when I drag it, so first off, let's show let's show what happens when I drag this cell. So let's drag it down. So the problem is, is now it's looking for a value, and it doesn't have one. So here in, say, in these all these boxes, there are no values. In this one, it has the wrong value, the right value, but in all the other ones, it's the wrong value. So let's go ahead and delete that cell and think about how we can change this so that when I drag it, it'll work for us. So the first thing we can do is we know that this 15 cents and the 1,000 are not going to change no matter where I drag in this table. Those are factors that always stay the same. So we're going to make H2 and B2 absolute references. So that's great. So now that we have H2 and B2 absolute references, we need to see what else we can do. Because now when I drag this down, still get an error. And let's go ahead and look at that. And now it's because of C8. Okay, so let's try to make, let's just go back and try to make it C7 an absolute reference and see what happens. So this is good, so let's go ahead and drag it down and voila, we get some changes. So let's see what's happening here. So now it's changing every time, which is great. Okay, so now we have that working. So now let's see what happens when we drag over. Okay, so now we have some other problems. So now the B's are going over, but there's another problem too, and we're going to fix that one first. We'll fix the B problem later. The C is not changing at all. So that's a big problem. We want our C to be able to change um, when it goes over. So this is an example of when we want a mixed reference. We want the C um, to change when we go left or right, but we don't want it to change when we go up or down. So let's go ahead and get rid of all of our values since we know we don't have the right formula. And let's go ahead and change that C. So let's change it again by hitting F4 to the first mixed reference. And let's see if that works. We can first test it by going down. Okay, good. So it stays C7. You can see every time I click on here, it's C7 every time. So that's great. And then let's see if it changes to D7 when I drag it over one cell. It does. So now we're going to need to do the B um, cells. The B cells are very similar for how we change this. Let me get rid of those. We are going to, um, we want to, for this A9, we want that to be a mixed reference, but we want it to be a mixed reference the opposite way of the C's. So we want it to change when we go down, but not change when we go over to the right. So let's see what happens. So this is exactly what we want. And we can sort of see how it plays out here. So now we have the cost of money to run these appliances for a certain number of hours. So this is how um, mixed and relative and absolute references can help a lot in Excel. Thank you for watching.